previous video we used the concept of neuron as an attempt to go from zero and ones to something smoother, but we end up realizing that neurons are nothing new, it's more or less like a logistic regression. And then we face with this problem, what if we have situations in which logistic regression cannot work? And then I introduced, I anticipated this concept of networking, which we could create different neurons specialized in different parts of the graph and then combining them together. So so let me show you an example. So let's take this data set again. We have this low dose and high dose, which are lethal, and then the intermediate case, which is the healthy one. Forget about a minute about this code. And let me explain you the topology of this neural network. So here is different from the situation before, because now the input and the output are not connected directly. So we have this intermediate here, and this is called the hidden layer. The size of the layer, which is this parameter here, is 2 in this case. And again, we have some biases and we have some weights. So each of these circles is a neuron. So let's see what is happening here. Take the input, multiply by the weight, and then add the bias, pass this through the activation function, and then we have this output here. So the, the role of this neuron, of this blue neuron, is taking this logistic regression. So this neuron is specializing in this part of the graph. Or another way to put it, this neuron is specialized in those cases in which high levels of the drug is producing some lethality in the patient. What about the other one? Again, multiply this weight by this number, by the input, and then add the, uh, the bias, use the activation function, and then we get this curve. And again, what is happening here, the, the green line is specializing in this part of the graph. So it's telling us the probability of low, of low levels of the drug in increasing the probability of survival of the patient. And now we combine them with two different weights again, so these thick lines again are weights, in the output layer. And, and we again are multiplying the output of each function by weight, adding this bias, using the activation function, and, and here is the magic of neural networks. So we have this function, which is a kind of non-linear combination, and non-linearity comes from the activation function, but it's capturing more or less the shape of this curve. As you can see here, the fit is not very good, and there is one reason for that, and it's related to the data. You have a lot of overlap here and here, so there are a lot of patients with the same level of the drug, in one, in one case surviving, and the other case they're not. So the neural network is doing the, their best to fit this. And this is not a very good fit, but because the data is not very good in this situation. I'm going to show you this visually. You can go to this web page, and actually after seeing this video, I recommend you strongly that you go there and play a little bit with that. Imagine that you have this data set. You have the blues and, and, and the oranges, and we want to classify them. If we have just one input like this, and in this case the range is minus 1 and 1, and this is why instead of using the sigmoid, we're using a hyperbolic tangent, but forget about the mathematical details. So we have this input, and the yellow means minus 1, and blue means plus 1. If we want to classify this data set according to just one input, the, the logistic regression, the best that it can do is basically drawing a line and saying, okay, everything below 0 is orange, and everything above 1 with high probability is blue. Okay? What if our val variable is like this, our input? In this case, logistic regression, the best that it can do, with, because we have only this axis, is classify the world in below and above zero. But what if we have a situation in which we can combine different inputs? In this case, remember that what we are doing is multiply each of the inputs by a weight, W1 and W2, combine them together, and then add some bias, and then use this activation function. And in this case, this is the equation of a straight line. So what can we do with one neuron and two inputs? Well, create one straight line that classifies better the data set as before. If you click here in this checklist, you can see the probability. So instead of having a uh, sharp classification, you see something which is uh, smoother. And this part here, this bright part here, is related to this area of the sigmoid in which the probability is not 0 or 1, but it's something in the middle. But could you have a situation in which the problem is not linearly separable? So we have a couple of groups here, orange group here, and blues here there. So there is no way in which you can combine these variables. There is no straight line that can divide the world and give a good classification. So now what can we do? Or even worse, what if we, instead of having these four squares, we have something like this? Of course, maybe we could imagine some straight line giving a good result, but here it's almost impossible. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. But before that, Again, I recommend you to go to this page and then play a little bit and try to have some intuition about the role of using more inputs and using zero hidden layers.